if I'm an entrepreneur and I'm going to a venture capitalist and I say, hey, I've got this brilliant idea. You're going to love it. Um, but I need $100 million to get it started. And I say, whoa, what do you need $100 million for? They say, well, I don't, I don't think I'm going to make any money off of it. So I, I'm going to make money off of my seed round. Right. <laughs> no venture capitalist is going to be like, yeah, here's $100 million, right? And 80% of projects in Hollywood fail. And you end up in this really weird, weird situation. So we said, let's align us with the creator at the hip where we don't have a distribution fee. We don't, you know, take out random fees up and down the line. We have our hard costs for marketing at 25%, our 9 to 15% distribution actual expenses. And then we split with the creator two thirds, one third. They get two thirds, we get one third, and they can pay back their original investors. And in our model, that's the crowd. Um, who comes in investors in those projects, which we can talk a little bit more about here in a, mi- in a minute, but it allows for them, it's been so interesting to me as we've, we've discovered this model. I've had creators come in the door, they pitch me their incredible idea, I say, okay, cool, how much do you need for that series? And they'll go, I probably need like $25 million. I'm like, okay, and then I'll walk through our presentation, I get to the end, and, and, I'm, and I literally had creators text me afterwards or reach out to me afterwards. It's like, I was reevaluating my production budget, so I think I can do it for eight. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it's like, oh my goodness, it just dropped into a third. That's amazing. Yeah. And it's because they realize here's a world where we're actually going to get paid if this is successful. So, so it's kind of like it, it sounds like um, for reasons that I still don't fully understand, Hollywood is kind of a cartel where a very <laughs> small number of decision makers control everything and they get fat and happy. Um, but it's just a huge barrier to entry for, for creative types that have a beautiful idea. Maybe they're, maybe they're not finance guys that are gonna figure out ever how to come up with a $25 million budget. So all the good stuff gets left on the table or, or it never even gets thought about in the first place. Um, to me, this is like radically democratic in a sense that oh yeah the, yes. the same way I think about what's happened to music like there's upsides and downsides to to what technology has done to music distribution but it also means that my bizarre tastes in music are served that's exactly and right the bands that create my bizarre taste in music um, thrive in a way that they just they just wouldn't have existed right. before that yeah. so it's kind of a creative disruption thing um, and I, you know, I, I call it the movie industrial complex, but I would also talk about the music industrial complex where some guy was deciding, when I was a kid, some guy was deciding for me what kind of music I liked, and I didn't like it at all. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, for sure. And I think so much of that is plays into how we were able to create Tuttle Twins as a show. I mean, it's crowdfunded, right? Yeah. So you're not gonna go to Hollywood and pitch a major executive on creating a show about freedom and economics for kids because they're not going to fund it, right? Right. And so instead, we went to the crowd, um, both the people who would purchase the books and people who we felt like would be like-minded and said, would you like this kind of a series to exist? And they said yes, like a resounding yes when we gave a kind of a proof of concept. We we developed um, a the first pilot episode into an, an animatic. So it's a series of storyboards and temporary voices and things like that. So you could watch it and see kind of how it was gonna gonna flow. It's like one of those things you watch on a behind the scenes DVD, right? Yeah. And we put that out in front of the public and said, do you want us to make this into, um, into a series, into a season? And it was over 8,000 people that said yes and invested in fact, there was a whole bunch of them that were saying, I don't even care if I get my money back. <laughs> I, just, I just want this thing to exist, right? Yeah. And so we to raised- To be clear, as for Angel, we want them to get yes, their money back. Yes, we want them to get their money back. We very much want them to get their money back because that's the only way we get our money back as well. But um, but ultimately, the uh, we were able to raise $3.7 million, which was um, a world record for the amount of crowdfunded money raised for a, a kid show. 